Hi everybody. This is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland, and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate simple moving averages in Excel 2010. So before we start, let's take a look at some data. I've got some simple data here on the left-hand side, representing sales figures for the 12 months of the year 2011. So you can see what I've got in January right down to the end of December. And over on my right-hand side over here, I've charted those data. So across the bottom, I've got my labels of months. And then I've got my sales figures here to give us this blue line, quite a jagged blue line um, with a lot of variation in it. And moving averages allow me to do two things. First of all, it will allow me to smooth this data, but it will also allow me to, as you can see, I've got a question mark down here. It will allow me to help predict what the sales figures are likely to be in January using moving averages. So let's go and see about creating these two things. In my example here, I want to use a three month moving average. So this means that I have to start in April because we always use the previous three months. So in March, for example, I've only got two previous months figures and so therefore I can't calculate a three month moving average. So I'm going to leave January, February and March blank here. And in the cell here beside April, that's cell D5, I want to insert a formula to calculate the moving average for the previous three months. Now, if you move down to the right-hand corner of my diagram over here, you'll see the formula for this. F stands for the forecast uh, for the current time period. So the forecast demand, T, during time T, that will be April in this case here, is equal to A, which is the actual demand for T minus 1, so April minus 1 is March, plus the actual demand for T minus 2, so April minus 2 is February, plus the actual demand for t minus 3, so t minus 3 uh, is April, minus 3 is January. And then because it's a three-month moving average, we divide that by 3. So let's try and put that formula into a, an Excel formula over here. So first of all, I'm pressing in the equal sign, and I need to put the actual demands in an overall brackets here because of precedent, so I'm putting in an opening bracket here. And I want to have a t minus 1, which is the March figure, so I'm going to click on the March figure, plus a t minus 2, which is the February figure, so I click on the February figure, plus a t minus 3, which is the January figure, click on that, put my closing bracket in, and then divide it by 3, so that's slash 3, and that gives me the formula here to calculate the moving average for April. So let's press enter, and we can see that it, the result is 8,421. So this means that the moving average for January, February, and March is 8,421. Now let's calculate the moving average for the next three months. That's February, March, and April. And I'm simply going to use Excel's fill tool. So I'm going to click on the bottom right-hand corner of the cell. You can see my mouse change to a cross. And pull it down one cell, and I can now see a value of 9,005, which is the moving average for, if I press the F2 button here to show me the formulas, the moving average for April, March, and February. And in fact, now, if I copy that formula right down to December, we can see that we've got our moving average calculations for each of the months of the year for 2011. One more step here, and I can use this to predict my likely sales based on a three-month moving average for January. So uh, January's figure here, the F for, for January, will be A, T minus 1, which is December, A, T minus 2, which is November, plus A, T minus 3, uh, divided by 3, of course. So I'm going to use Excel's fill tool here just to calculate uh, the figure, uh, final figure here, is 10,421. That is my predicted sales figures for January based on a three-month moving average using the December, November, and October figures. If I want to use a four-month moving average, uh, I would just uh, add in an extra month into my formula and then divide by four or whatever number I, of months that I choose to calculate the moving average for. So I also said when we were looking at the chart up here that I would like to smoothen these data out. So this chart represents, I'm going to highlight it here, first of all, my 12 months of the year for 2000 in January, uh, plotted against the sales figures for 2011. And I now want to plot a new chart, so I'm going to select January and February again, doing this with my mouse, and then holding down the control key, and this time select all the cells for these months for the three-month moving average. Then choose the insert ribbon. I'm going to use a simple line uh, graph here. This is the line with markers choice. 
and this is going to give me a graph. I'll just remove this label here. This gives me a, a, a graph which is a lot smoother than the one we had previously. If I compare the two charts, you can see that the one on my right-hand side over here shows a lot of variation. And the one on the left-hand side, first of all, it does not include figures for January, February, and March because we were not able to calculate those. But you can see that my line here is a lot smoother than the one over on the right-hand side. So I've reduced variation, and I can see a better overall trend throughout the year. So instead of seeing slightly up and down in the um, un um, weighted figures over here. My weighted moving average over here is showing that there is a trend from uh, April up to October of increase and then in November and December it is decreasing using my weighted moving average. If you look at the figures over here on the right hand side, and these are raw figures, they're not weighted, you can see that the actual sales are decreasing towards the end of the year. So our moving average figure here will give us a better forecast uh, for the next year and especially for the month of January using the simple moving average formula. So that's how you calculate simple moving averages in Excel 2010. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.